are you? Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name's Camel and today we have a guide for one of the last known blade swords in Skyrim. Not only that, but it is unique. Of course, this is Bolar's Oath Blade. Now be sure to hit up my social medias, links to them can be found down in the description. There is also a timestamp that will take you directly to the overview of the weapon if you so wish to use it. Now while Bolar's Oath Blade won't accompany you until the end of the game, it sure is a pretty prize to pick up early on, and luckily for us that can be achieved quite easily. As there is no level requirement to get this, so you could acquire it even at level 1. What we will need to do is make our way to the southernmost area of Skyrim, to a cave called Bloated Man's Grotto. On the map it can be found here in the mid-south of Whiterun, where the tundra meets the mountains. Once here, veer off the road at the Cairn, and head inside the rather uninviting cave entrance. Now that we're inside, we will be faced with several forms of beasts namely some wolves and a bear, but luckily nothing too staggering. Now we do come to this cave during the Hercene questline Ill Met by Moonlight, however I'll talk more in depth on that later on in this video and how it affects the acquisition of Bolar's Oathblade. For now though, head to the back of the very lovely grove, where we will be met by ancient temple ruins and an altar of Talos accompanied by a statue of Talos. At the base of this statue is a piece of paper called Bolar's Writ. It reads as follows. To he who finds this, know that I, Asilius Bolar, last of the blades to survive the attack on Cloud Ruler Temple, took refuge here in this ancient sanctuary. The Thalmor have come for me, but they shall not desecrate this place. I go forth to meet my death with honor. If you are worthy, take up my blade and do the same. That's very heavy and very cool, as this Bola also left his sword here at the statue of Talos. So be sure to grab it, so Asilius can live on with each of your swings. And now that we have it, let's check it out. Bolar's Oathblade. It's got a base damage of 11, a swing speed of 1. This leaves us with a base DPS of 11. It's got a reach of 1, a weight of 10, a value of 1014. Now it can be upgraded using a quick silver ingot, which requires you to have the arcane smithing perk. However, it benefits from the steel smithing perk, so it can be upgraded all the way to legendary without the assistance of smithing fortification effects. And it's enchantment. It does 25 points of stamina damage and creatures and people up to level 12 flee from combat for 30 seconds. So let's talk about Bolar's Oathblade and how it will and won't be useful to you. Firstly, how it will be useful. You can come and get this at any level. This includes level 1, so of course, this will be a very welcome addition to your armory at low levels, as it bears the same base damage as an elven weapon or a scimitar. The stamina damaging effect is a powerful one, sitting at 25 points. But personally, when I see stamina damage enchantments, I do not get excited. Now the fear enchantment on the other hand is a powerful one. Creatures and people up to level 12 will flee from combat for 30 seconds. Now that period of time is massive. To be put another way, if something is running from you for 30 seconds in Skyrim, you will be able to kill that something before it can come to its senses and attack you as normal. However, the fear enchantment is also the main factor that will eventually render Bolar's Oathblade useless, or at least much less useful to you. The fear effect only works on enemies up to level 12, so clearly, once you begin encountering enemies higher than level 12, the main feature of Bolar's Oathblade will become benign. Interestingly though, for this video I was using a level 22 character and every enemy I came across was still affected by the fear effect. So Bolar's Oathblade, while it will eventually become useless to you, it also will actually remain useful to you and fully effective for a longer period of time than what we might have originally thought. At some point though, the fear effect will stop working, 
and you will encounter other weapons that outweigh Bolar's Oathblade in both stats and enchantments. Nonetheless, it is still a blade that will serve you well for quite some time, allowing you to stab your enemies in the back as they flee in fear at the sight of you wielding a blade sword. Now, as mentioned earlier, Bloated Man's Grotto, the location in which we found this sword, is also used as the location for the quest Ill Met by Moonlight given by the Daedric Prince of the Hunt, Hersey. Now I do already have guides to both endings and rewards for that quest if you'd like to check them out later. Now during that particular Daedric quest, when you come to Bloated Man's Grotto, Bolar's Oathblade will not be present. Unfortunately, performing and finishing the quest can result in you being unable to acquire the blade. Apparently, if you haven't retrieved the blade before starting the quest ill met by Moonlight, there is only one way to get it. You'll have to kill Sinding and then actively not enter Bloated Man's Grotto for another in-game month. After that period, the cave will reset to its pre-quest state, allowing you to obtain Bolar's Oathblade as per usual. Another interesting tidbit, when equipped, some NPCs may say, be careful with that fire. Even though, of course, Bolar's Oathblade does not have a fire enchantment. This is because one of its actual enchantments has been incorrectly tagged as a fire-based enchantment resulting in NPCs reacting as if your blade was aflame like Beric Dondarrion. Now this sword belonged to one of the last blades that was stationed in Skyrim, Asilius Bolar. Of course, after the White Gold Concordat was signed, every last member of the blades was hunted down and exterminated by the Thalmor. Asilius Bolar, an Imperial Blades member who had somehow survived the attack on Cloud Ruler Temple, made his way to Bloated Man's Grotto, wrote his his writ and laid his sword down safely at the feet of his god, Talos. He then left and met his death with honor at the hands of the Thalmor, leaving both his sword and the shrine to Talos safe and untouched by the culling of the blades, executed by the Thalmor. Of course, some years later, we stumble upon it and take up the blade in his name. So be sure to swing this blade with conviction and land each blow with the honor of a Blades member, Asilius Bolar. And if you get the chance, kill some Thalmor scum with it. And ladies and gentlemen, here it is in action. Bolar's Oathblade. <laughs> And there you have it, ladies and gents. I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for the unique sword known as Bolar's Oathblade. I do hope this video helped you out, and if it did, you'll be very interested in checking out the other Skyrim Special Edition guides I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description, you can also find links to my social medias. Now be sure to follow me on Twitter, and if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can of course become a patron on, would you believe it? Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.